Okay, it, it says it's recording. Okay. Uh, okay, good. I'll be on my best behavior. Yeah, don't worry, don't <laughs> worry. No PC here. So, welcome. It's, it's, I'm very happy to meet you in like face to face, more or less, but Thank I you. more or less with, with the end before, but it's, it's great to finally be able to talk to you one on one. So, thank you for saying yes, Dennis. I'm, I'm a big fan of your work. I've been following you and, and the other guys for months, maybe years, maybe at least one year, I guess. And it's amazing what, what you've accomplished in so, in so little time in, in our Twitter sphere. It's, it's, it's amazing. Can you tell uh, us a little bit about that? Well, uh, um, I've been on Twitter uh, quite a while. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, the first, uh, I mean, at first, I, 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 the first couple of years, I guess, I joined Twitter and I couldn't really even see the point of it. And so I didn't use it. But then when I started getting serious about it, mm -hmm. um, it, it, you know, it was a kind of a hard, hard climb there, um, you know, slowly, slowly. Uh, this past year, um, I, I, my follower account increased dramatically. Yes, almost, it did. Yeah, almost doubled in the last year. Wow. So I think, I mean, I made, you know, I made a few changes. Um, you know, like, for example, as you know, because you designed my banner, I did that. <laughs> right. Um, and, and, you know, I think the biggest change I, I, made was um just just tweeting what was really on my mind and not being so concerned about what the reaction would be um there's always going to be people out there that take strong exception to what yes. you say if, yes. if what you if what you're saying is anything uh, uh, at least a little bit out of the ordinary and so you just you just you know you can't worry about that if you if you want to really use Twitter um, properly for what it's for. I yes. mean, you know, having reasonable debate is is one thing, and that that's good. But then you get trolls and haters, and wow. you know that you know my my policy is to use the block button liberally. <laughs> How many people have you blocked? Oh, I, I really don't know. I mean, you know, <laughs> some, some days, uh, you know, some days I, I block a bunch and then, uh, you know, then a while will go by before blocking, but <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm sure I've blocked, I've blocked plenty of people because yeah. it's just, it's just not, it's not, not worth having a conversation with somebody who's first, the, their, their first remark is to insult you. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's just, okay, bye. You know, that's, that's, <laughs> You know, and so so that's how I do that. That's how I manage that. Mo you know, I, I I have to add, most people are fine. They're respectful. Mm -hmm. They you know want to have some dialogue or want to add something to the conversation, and that's great. You know, one one of the things I like the most about your your Twitter, the way you manage Twitter, is that you are not polarizing for the sake of polar of polarization. So you, for example, told me once that you don't curse online you don't right. use profane language and that's like that's tough for many people because it's a, you know, it's an easy way to to get attention and being fun being reading your tweets i don't see that i don't see that and that's that's quite an amazing amazing feat today in age and how did you reach that conclusion well like, uh i i guess i look at it like mm -hmm. i mean i mean if if i'm if I'm among friends, uh, you know, there, there's certainly I I'm not above uh, swearing and and especially under under my breath to myself. That that's a <laughs> that, I, that I swear. But I I, I just look at it as, uh, um, you know, I'm talking to other people. If I if I was in, in a workplace or some public place or something, I I don't go off and 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 use a lot of cursing or swearing mm -hmm. uh it's it's you know it's reserved for very you know certain occasions intimate occasions with friends with friends kind of Fa maybe yeah. family yeah sure um and and so that that's all i look at it as uh 
you know, this is a public forum and I don't want to come across as, you know, like a drunken sailor or something (laughs) like that. And uh, so that that's all. That's just 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 my policy. I'd rather not do it. I it's not that I have never done it, but Uh uh, I try not to. It's great because the way you're, you're trying to approach your your brand goes in line with with your mission. And I wanted to talk a little bit about that. Tell me about your credentials. What did you do for a living? And how did you manage to reach your current state of of being? Well, um, so uh, I'm a clinical microbiologist. I have been a clinical microbiologist for -hmm. for most of my adult life. And um, and so I I have a bachelor's degree in microbiology. So that's my sole credential. And uh, so it really, in a sense, uh, my, my credential isn't terribly relevant to what I'm doing because it doesn't, you know, it doesn't qualify me medically or, or anything like that. Okay. But, but, uh, but I do understand biochemistry and physiology and so on. Um, right. So, so there's a, you know, there's a credential there, but my real, um, my real credential, I guess you could say, is I, you know, I've done the reading and the research and and thought about certain things and come to various conclusions. So I think that, uh, you know, I've been writing on my my website, Rogue Health and Fitness, for a number yes. of years now. Yes. And I think that uh, I can I can honestly refer people to that website and and I'll say, see, this and this is should. these are my credentials. This is what I've done. I back everything I say. Try I. It, I back everything I say with scientific research. Great. If it's not, if there's not explicit scientific research to back it, I I am also explicit that something is my opinion. Um, okay. So, so you so make that's, sure people understand that this is my opinion and this is what fact is. Right. Great. Right. That, exactly. That's something we're, we're missing that 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 part of the dialogue to the NH. And it's refreshing to see it. It's very well, refreshing to see it. So, well, yes. Yeah. No. Well, thank you. Uh, that that's what I try to do, I, because I realize that um, mm-hmm. uh, you know it's open to anyone to say, well, you know, who are you to say this kind of stuff? And I say, well, I this is what the research says, or this is my opinion. You know, you can look for yourself. Or, You've tried you know, it yourself. Right. Sure. Yeah, I've seen you before in a, and after pictures. You can see right. the difference. Yeah, sure. Yeah. So how, how, how did you make the jump from your career to fitness? How did that happen? Um, well, I've, I've always been interested in health and fitness from mm-hmm. a relatively early age, let, let's say about age 20. Um, okay. And uh, this is something I've written about on, on my, my website that, um, that about the, the heart disease epidemic, mm-hmm. right? So heart disease was going way, way up. It peaked it in has. the United States. It has. Uh, yes, between about 1965 and 70. And it's been going down ever since then. Um, but, it, you know, at the time when I grew up, uh, my my father had heart disease, and okay. so it it didn't kill him, and he ended up living to a good old age. But um, he did have heart disease, and it really impaired his life a lot. And I did saw you that. Inherit and I something thought, from that? Beg your pardon. Did you inherit that that, that heart disease? No, no, no. Oh, so I'm that's no, cool. I'm I'm fine, and I'm sure that. Uh, you know, that it was, uh, it, that it was a lifestyle thing for him. Okay. Um, okay. and so I was, I felt, uh, determined that I was never going to, that wasn't going to happen to me. Okay. Um, so, you know, so this was, uh, you know, I mean, I was, I was 20 years old in 1975. So there was still a lot <laughs> of this going on. And, okay. um, anyway, I, uh, to keep this with that, without going on and on, Mm-hmm. I, I became, uh, I, I got into running. So okay. uh, running became um, uh, popular in the 1970s and I took it up and it was great. I liked it a lot. Okay. Ended up uh, running a lot for distance. Okay. Um, Ever uh, won something? Some marathon? Did you win? I have run a couple of marathons, yes. Have you won any? 
Uh, oh no, no, <laughs> not, nothing like that. Almost, almost, almost. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. So, so I'm a, this is what I managed to to gather from you. So, like the main reason that you change your habits from fitness and, and health and eating is because you wanted to prevent something in, in your heart. Because right. it runs in your family. Maybe right. because your father had that, did it? So it, you started at age 20. Right. So besides your father's like uh, heart disease, is there any, any other reason because for you to make the jump to, to fitness and, and start like uh, dieting and exercising? Um, you know, I, I don't know. I, I've looked at, I've, so some people think that I have maybe, maybe kind of uh, extreme habits, uh, mm -hmm. you know, as far as health and fitness goes. I, I don't think they are. It's just normal to me. Give me But, an example. Um, well, just, just for example, watching what I eat, you know, so uh, a, a lot of people, um, you know, You know, as I've written about on Twitter in the United States, I mean, uh -huh. there's, food, there's food everywhere and yes. people, you know, hey, you know, have some of this. I say, no, nah, you know, no, nah, I'm not going to have that. And, and <laughs> so, um, you know, that that's just one small example. Um, but I, I just look at it as, uh, you know, taking care of myself. I, mm -hmm. I look at it as an extension of like looking both ways before you cross the street right oh, it's, that's a it's great just, analogy it's just some elementary ways to keep yourself alive and healthy yes um, so that that's how i see it so when you say you watch what you eat is it only like i won't eat this or do you pay attention to the macros and what what the proteins and carbs that it, that your food has it it's it's mainly the former um i i don't i don't pay a lot of attention to You don't count calories. Um, no, I don't, I don't count calories. I, I kind of have an idea of how much protein I get, but nothing very precise. And um, it's, it's mostly I want to stay away from garbage food. And, yes. and so I've chosen the way I eat, and I, I just stick to it, and that's all. Give me some examples of garbage foods, like Doritos, Cheetos, sure. that, 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 that kind of things. Sure, all those things, uh, you know, donuts and pastries. Oh, man, donuts. Uh, yeah, yep. Yeah. I, I mean, I used to love donuts. And, <laughs> um, but even very common things that, that people eat that they uh -huh. think are healthy, so like breakfast cereal, uh -huh. uh, fruit juice, orange juice. Mm -hmm. um, and then there's, there's the more, you know, more common junk foods like pizza and soda pop oh, and, and this kind of thing. I, I almost ate pizza today. Uh, you know, being, being a, a little bit self-conscious of, of diet, sometimes it's, it's hard. For me, it's a little bit hard, okay? I went on a full carnivore diet for eight months. It, was, it, was, it changed my life, to be honest. But I know that not every person can do that. Not only because, not, not for willpower, but because it's society yeah they, they destroy you my family oh my god <laughs> my wife's right. family they they bullet they bullet me in, in in a good way like to eat stuff uh, pasta and that sort of stuff not everyone can manage that kind of attacks even if, if, if they do it like in a joking manner so what would you say to the young fellows that will be watching the this interview to do instead of like changing completely their habits, uh, their eating habits in, in that extreme way? What would you say to them? Well, uh, I guess I would say a couple of things. Uh -huh. One is that, that, that if you want to, um, if, if you want to be eat, eat in a healthy way that you are really going to have to um, be different. In, yes. In certain ways, you're, you're going to have to deal with the fact that um, other people are different, that society at large is different. They, they don't think the same as you. 
And it can be difficult because eating yes. is so central. We eat several times a day. We eat socially, family and friends. Mm -hmm. it's, 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 it can be difficult, I understand. But you know, if you want to do that, you, you've just got to do it. The, the other thing um, I say, another thing I would say is that uh, people ask me this a lot about, um, see, I, I eat a very low carbohydrate diet and so mm -hmm. people ask me about carbohydrates and I say, well, if you're lean and healthy and you exercise regularly, a few carbs are not going to hurt you. So for a young man who's in, re in good health and, he, and he's lean and so on, he does, you know, you don't have to um, carry it to an extreme, I would say that, you know, if you, if you're out with friends or something like that, you know, go ahead. It's, it's Eat not your like, ice cream. Right. Exactly. Right. Just don't do it overboard. Don't, don't go right. overboard. Right. Yeah, I, I, and, I, I, but but for, yeah. for some, for someone who is not, doesn't have each three of those things. So if you're not lean, you're not healthy and you don't exercise a lot, you're going to have to be a lot more careful. Yeah. So, what would you say are like the power foods people should eat? Um, uh, this is just a market term, power foods. It's just regular food that, that, that people could, could go to the supermarket or to their farmer's market. You have farmer's market in the U.S., do you? Uh, right, uh, yeah. What do you suggest people buy more and eat well, more? Well, yeah, I suppose this term power foods is, is kind of it's a just marketing. Yeah. But yeah, marketing, right. Um, but the, the obvious answer to me is meat and other yes. animal foods, right? Because the, these foods are, are, are demonized when the reality is 180 degrees different. They're, it's very healthy to eat. Most people do, do not, many people do not eat enough of them um, because, you know, they've been told it's bad for you and so on. Possibly more important is you know the foods you should not be eating and which we've just discussed all yes. all the junk foods right so um yeah i think i think for most people if they you know if they tossed the breakfast cereal box and had eggs for breakfast instead they would be a lot healthier so you know that's what that's just one example no and, and next are fabulous because i once read and fact check me here because you're the one who knows about that i read that if you eat more protein protein in mornings your cravings for eating lower during the day that yes that oh. that is that is correct <clears throat> that is correct uh, pro protein has the most satiating effect it makes you less hungry and if you eat especially if you eat more uh, in the morning you'll be less hungry that's been demonstrated in an actual scientific experiment uh -huh. people eating eggs in the morning then they eat they eat less the rest of the day compared to people eating high carbohydrate food. Yeah, and, and those carbs, oh man, when, when you stop eating carbs, you, you can even get sick. When I stopped full, like cold turkey, eating carbs, I got sick. They call it like keto flu, something like that. Yeah, keto flu, right. I, I got sick for, for two weeks. And I said, uh, oh man, I, I, I messed up. I, I shouldn't have <laughs> done this. And after the two weeks, it just, everything became clear. It's, it's, it's quite a, an interesting experience. Like a, 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 everything, I used to, to, to have like brain fog, a lot of brain fog, and it went away. It went completely away. It, it, this is a, li a little bit of hyperbole, but what I'm going to say right now, but things like became more colorful. It's, 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 it's the way I could express it in, in a, Visual way, okay. Everything became more colorful after I stopped eating garbage food. I just stopped that. I stopped. I had daily Coca Cola. Don't do that, man. <laughs> uh -huh, <laughs> that would right. mess you up fast. So after I stopped that, everything became clearer. My thoughts began flowing. My energy went up. And I started sleeping at 10 p.m. Like 10 p.m., I, I got sleepy. 5, 5.30 a.m., I jumped out of my bed, like, magically. That never had happened to me in my entire life. And talking about that, those are, like, the benefits of having a good diet. Would you mind expanding about uh, more, a little, bit, a little bit more about the benefits of having a good diet, especially sure, well, in young people? 
Um, well, sure. Uh, um, and, and you just described one benefit very well. Um, and uh, I think, you know, you have, you have more energy and ah. you, your, your mind is on a more even keel. And yes. there are benefits. There are benefits to mood too. You have a you have a better mood. Um, you know, it's been shown that depression is very closely associated with inflammation in the body. So if you get rid of that inflammation, uh, that can improve the mood and and get people uh, not depressed anymore. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, it, it it's it's a big benefit. I think most people don't really understand how. They don't, under, they don't understand the condition they're in as far as they, they don't understand how they could feel so much better. They think yes. that the way they feel is just normal and, and it isn't. It's not. For, for many people. I felt like that for, for years and I thought oh, everyone just feels this way. But right. then I met my wife. She, she's always in a great mood. Always. She can eat whatever she wants, whenever she wants. And her mood is stable. It's, it's, I envy that. <laughs> yeah. I cannot eat a lot of food without having those strange mood, mood swings. And, and people think that it's, it's something mental. I don't think it's mental. And I want, I want to talk a little bit about that because you, you talk about depression. That's like a hot topic right now. So I would like to expand a little bit on that, especially in the inflammation part because I, I never being able like to understand or to grasp what do you mean by inflammation in the body? Where in the body? In the, here? In the brain? In the heart? In the leg? So could you please explain that to me? Right. Um, so uh, there, there's a, a very interesting um, biological psychiatrist by the name of Dr. Michael Meiss. Uh -huh. M-A-E-S is, is how you spell his last name, who's, who's done, a, I think, really most of the original work on this and he's shown that depression is associated with inflammation. Mm -hmm. So what inflammation is, is, uh, inflammation is the body's response, defense response. So in like, if you get, uh, you know, a, an infection, like say an infected wound of some uh -huh. kind, it's going to be painful, red, yes. hot, and, and, uh, and with swelling. So that's, a, that's some kind of acute inflammation that the body mm -hmm. is doing to defend itself from this infection. But what happens if this happens in aging, it happens in depression is that people have this low level inflammation in their entire body. Their, their various, uh, it's not system. visible. Uh, beg your pardon. It's not visible. You cannot see that inflammation. Right, right. It, right. It is not. And, um, so the immune, the immune system is reactive. It's acting like there's uh, something that needs to be defended against. Mm -hmm. um, as it affects depression, uh, this is presumably going on in the brain also because it's, okay. going, it's going to be happening in every part of the body. So that, you know, it's, that's what's going on. And there are things that can, uh, if you can relieve the inflammation, uh -huh. you, you can help relieve the depression or, or treat it. I, I don't want to go so far as to say, this is a cure. cure or something like that, but but definitely it helps treat it. So it, about relieving, that's a very very interesting topic because you guys in the United States are having an opioid crisis right now, and drug related crisis, and people uh, and psychiatrists and psychologists giving away pills, magic pills for depressions. Okay, that's a way to relieve depression but it's not natural okay and we've been talking that depression has to, has to it seems as it's caused by inflammation in the body what natural ways would you recommend people to follow in order to relieve that inflammation there there are um but basically it it goes down to the same things that uh, give good health in any mm -hmm. other area. So a, a clean diet, regular exercise, good sleep, um, going out in the sunshine, getting getting good light exposure. So ba basically the opposite of what so many people do is when they're eating junk, they don't get mm -hmm. enough exercise, they're overweight, they don't sleep well, 
they spend their spare time watching television or uh, on the computer or something like that. So, so basically, though, you know, any anything that is conducive to good health, mm-hmm. uh, like I always talk about, is also conducive to relieving that inflammation and, so it's and hopefully change, change your habits, right. change your life. Right. Yeah, yes. Exactly. There's no. There's no. You know, there are there are certain things like, for example, magnesium as a supplement uh-huh. has been shown to help depression and to um, sleep well also. That's that's right, and um, so there are certain things like that. But overall, it's it's the you know clean lifestyle with a good diet and exercise and the other things that I mentioned. So let's let's change the topic a little bit more to the business part. You've created this. This is a drastic change from depression to business. That's that's <laughs> yeah. Uh, I also wanted to talk about that because you've managed to create a business. Out of, out of your imagination, out of your words, out of your mind, out of, out of just from typing from a computer. And it, it's a powerful thing that we didn't have 20, 30 years ago. You, your age is 61, you told me? Three, 63. 63. So you've seen the progress. You've lived it. You, you, at, at 20, you didn't have... YouTube, you didn't have cell phones. You don't have cell phones today in age also. You told me something like that. Uh, that's right. You I don't cell phones, have a cell so phone. No. You still live in, 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 the, in the 1990s. <laughs> yeah, right. And, but still, still, you do use technology for your business. You have your ebooks. Uh, I, I've, I've read the, your latest one. I'll be linking that in the comments. Okay. The what's its name? Like the one hour work, uh, workout week. What one hour fitness? One hour fitness, it, it, and right. it's, it talks about like one hour per week. That's right. Of, of fitness. We'll, we'll talk right. a little bit about that, but about the creation process and the business process. How did how did you take the leap from you used to be uh, an, you used to be employed, didn't you? Right. How, uh-huh. how did you manage to, to do that jump? Did you like quit and did it? Or did you began scaling your business and then just gra- grab the business by the... Right. right. Yeah, so, yes. So, so the latter. No, I didn't, uh-huh. I didn't just quit. And mm-hmm. I, I started out... Uh, ba- basically, the way I started was uh, I, I, had, I had been ill myself for some time. And I, I had... Um, uh, decided that, well, I figured out, you know, uh, figured out a lot of these things that I know now about, about a good diet and exercise mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. so on. And I decided that, um, you know, I, at one point a long time ago, I told myself, well, if I ever, if this ever makes me better or so on, I need to write a book about it. And so I got better and I thought, well, okay, here we go. I'll get, I need to write a book about it. So I wrote my first book that was five years ago. Wow. Uh, and, you know, the beauty of, of having uh, Amazon Kindle publishing now is that anybody can publish. And yeah. you know, in the past, you, knew, you had all the gatekeepers, the uh-huh. public publishers and so on. Yeah, and you can bypass them now. Um, so, so I did that. And uh, I, my, my girlfriend often reminds me about how the first, when I published my book, and the first month I published it, I said, hey, I made $50 online. <laughs> you know, it's like, wow, I made, I made money online. So anyway, I just, I just kept at it. I thought that there, that there were a lot of things that I knew that other people, that I had learned that people should know. And uh-huh. so I kept writing. I started my website, Rogue Health and Fitness, and, and I just kept at Great it. Name. And, Great name. Oh, uh, thanks. Um, yeah. So, uh, yes, in, in, it's interesting because, like you say, uh, when, you know, when I was younger, we didn't have the Internet. I think I, I must have been, you know, something like, um, oh, you know, 40, how, how old was I? Like 44 or something, the first time I ever sat down at a computer and went on the Internet. Maybe I, I was imagine. a little younger. How but was anyway. that experience? 
Well, you know, it, it was, I thought, oh, this is fun. You know, this is interesting. <laughs> Looking at these, uh, uh, like, uh, what did they have? Encarta. Uh, like, like ca uh, cam a camera stationed in the Antarctic, you know, and you could watch this, you know, what was going on. I thought, wow, that's wild. You know, you can watch what's happening in the Antarctic. Anyway, uh, what I was getting to is that What's helped me a lot in my business is some of you younger guys, um, you know, like Sean, Western Mastery on Twitter, nice. uh, people, people that you know uh -huh. as well. They've helped me a lot in business uh, be, uh, because there were, certain, there, were, there were a number of things I was doing wrong business-wise. Mm -hmm. And uh, so they've helped me get over that. And I've made a lot of progress over the last year. Um, so, so, yeah, that, that's what I've done. So you just didn't, you didn't quit. You, you scaled up until you were able to produce as much or more than what you earned in your job. Is that a fair assessment? That is a, that is a fair assessment. And there were times that I wanted to quit. Believe me. Um, I thought I, I was, there were times when I was pulling my hair out thinking, <laughs> what, you know, what am I doing here? What, what, what do I need to do to, you know, to make some actual real money? here um and but but so you know things are definitely looking up now so did you like wait till you were earning as much as your nine to five job or did you make the jump a little bit before you were earning as much um uh well a little bit before actually i'm still doing some part-time work at, you okay. know, at, a, at a day job do, uh, as a microbiologist Um, and so, but I've gradually cut back and, you know, so, but, and I'm devoting most of my time to doing what I'm doing with, with, uh, my rogue health and fitness. Yeah. With Twitter, your, your blog, uh, right. are, are you uh, thinking about a, a podcast or any other medium? You know, I've, I've, I've done a number of things like that. I've done podcasts and uh -huh. I, I really couldn't see the point of doing it very much because um you know i couldn't see it as a source of income or something like that and personally didn't enjoy it all that much um so yeah I, i feel like my forte is as a writer really yeah you write very well it's it's for me being like a, a, an outsider i'm uh, and english and having english as a second language i enjoy when smart people make things simple to understand and i believe that that's like one of the best skills skills one can have in the internet make complicated stuff make it sim simple and you have that ability and that's i think that that's a key a key for success in online business would you agree with that um yes uh, and this is something i've had to learn myself uh pe you know when i was writing a few years ago i i had people say you know this is this is kind of tough stuff I, <laughs> i'm not really understanding um there there's actually a, a term for this called the the writer's curse or the curse of knowledge and and that is the idea that if you know a subject fairly well you you don't really understand that other people don't know this, that, that they don't know the same things you know and that you have internalized. You think, oh, this is so obvious. I'm just going to talk about this. Everybody will understand, but they don't. And so um, that, was, that was important for me, understanding that, that, yeah, you know, people, people aren't understanding this. It's, it is complicated. I know it pretty well, but they don't. So I, I've got to make sure that they understand. Um, and then also over the past year or so, um, I've studied a little bit of copywriting. And yeah, it's a superpower. It, yeah. Yes. And so uh, I've started incorporating that more into my style just uh, as I write my articles. Um, and, and so, you know, that, that helps too. It helps get the point across, you know, much more clearly. And you said something that caught my attention about saying stuff that seem obvious. I think that that's one of the biggest mental barriers newcomers have. They believe that, oh, I don't have nothing important to say. Everything has been said. Everything has been done. Uh, I'm not an expert on that. 
and, and you just destroyed that uh, by saying that it, um, it, it's not about um, creating new stuff. It's about simplifying what you know. It, does, it doesn't matter if you think it's, it's, it's already said. Just say it and say it in your own words. And with copywriting, it's, it, you, you put a little bit of steroids to, to the words. Right, so right. That's, a great, that's a great asset to have. Yes, Sim ab simple absolutely. words plus copywriting, you, you can conquer the internet with, with those two things. It's, right. it's quite amazing. Yeah. And uh, talking about amazing things, I, I would like to end uh, this interview with, uh, with these questions. What three things would you do differently? And what three things would you do the same if you were starting all over again with your online business and in, in, the, in the fitness world? Well, okay, so what would I do differently? Um, Just three, if, if you can. Sure, one, one, one thing is um, that, I suppose this, this is the main thing that, mm -hmm. I, that I've realized over the past year or two is that um, when I started out, they say, okay, have a website, uh, do uh, uh, write in such a way that you have this great SEO search engine optimization, right? Yes. So people can find you when they search that you come near the top of results, you know, and they'll come to your site and then you have a product in my case, Kindle books to sell them. Mm -hmm. Well, for me, you know, it, it just didn't work very well at all. Um, people could find my site, but you know, there are a lot of sites writing about health and fitness and so yes. on. Uh, there, there are tons of them. And the other thing is that Kindle books, uh, any kind of books really, they have a very low profit margin. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you really to make any kind of decent money in books, you have to be uh, like a nearly a best-selling author yes. because you've, you've got to sell a lot of books to make mm -hmm. money. And if you're somebody like me, you know, you, you, you sell a few and you know, the, the a little bit of money comes in. So that, that whole thing, I mean, I'm still doing that. I still have my website and my Kindle books, obviously, but I'm, mm -hmm. I'm just not putting very much emphasis on it over, over say, say six months ago or, or a little more. I had all this stuff put together for a new book. I thought, man, this is great. I've got all this. I researched it thoroughly, even started writing it. And I thought, what am I doing this for? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to write this book, put it up there, a Kindle book, you know, for $10. And then, <laughs> and then you know, a paperback book for maybe $15 at the uh -huh. moment. And, and I'm going to make, you know, unless it becomes a bestseller, uh -huh. which I felt I had little chance of happening, then I'm not going to make very much money. And I'm going to put all this work into it. Yes. Um, so... I mean, it's a shame, really, because I still have ideas for that that would go best as a book. Like, mm -hmm. for you know, now for example, you know, my my fitness plan, that's great to sell as as a plan, as as a sort of a course yeah. that I have. But if you want to, if you want to sell, if you want to put out information that is not sort of immediately relevant then a book is the best thing. Like say somebody wanted to write a biography of somebody, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So that, that doesn't work as a course or, or a, you know, a plan of some kind. It has to be a book. So there, there are too many things like that. But unfortunately, that, that's just the way it works. I, mm -hmm. I don't see any way around that at the moment. So that part of the business thing, yeah, yeah that, that I wish I had got, gotten out of uh, longer ago, I, I read Kindle and Amazon to, for example, Gumroad and eBooks, right? And, and smaller uh, products, right? And the, the the thing the thing that I found is that um, you when when you sell a book, you mm -hmm. you're putting it out there for the public, right? When when you have a, a, a like say my fitness plan. Yes. You're selling it mainly to people who already know you and follow okay. you. Okay. They're either, they either follow you on Twitter or, uh -huh. or they're on my email list. Okay. So these are people who are already interested in what you have to say. Yes. And, and, right. And so 
it, it's, they're interested. They will buy your product. So that's a much better way to go. It's a smaller market, but they, they are more interested in you. And so that, that's what, business-wise, that's what I'm focusing on is that, that these people who follow me on Twitter or on my email list, um, you know, I'm focusing on them. So you will say that you, things you would change is put Kindle and Amazon away for a while and spend more time with direct marketing with people. Twitter, yes. email list, right, and maybe blogging, maybe. Not yes, I, I, I certainly want to keep my hand in there. Uh -huh. I, I don't want my website to just sort of dry up, uh, mm -hmm. but I'm certainly writing fewer articles now for it. Um, so, you know, thing, things, I still, I still get into some topics. Uh -huh. um, for instance, the last article I wrote for my website was about the uh, so-called anti-aging drug metformin. You and have so a course I, about that. Right. And so I, I, um, you know, I read a bunch of research and I said, you know, I, to myself, I've got to write this up because this is important stuff. Mm -hmm. And so I put it on there with, you know, the article being that maybe it isn't really an anti-aging drug and because you just see this everywhere, you know, they want to do a clinical trial for aging and so on. Anyway, I'm digressing, but the point is I thought it was important enough to write an article for my website. Mm -hmm. And, um, but you know, so I'm still doing that. But, but mostly I want to focus on, you know, on direct marketing to the people who already follow me. Great, Dennis. So to end on a really high note of, 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 future, of future, what did you say that, what would you say you envision for your future now in 2019 and more? You know, it's, it's hard to say. I mean, I, I just keep focusing on the work, on improving um, and, um, and putting out good content. I hope mm -hmm. it's great content. And, and, um, I think a lot of people, I hear from people all the time. They're, they're getting, they're understanding my message and they're, they're saying that I've helped them. And that's, that's very gratifying to hear. Yes. I, I really like that. So, um, all I can say is I want to expand my reach. I want to keep getting my message out there. I want you to keep, <clears throat> I want to keep writing. Um, and you know, I'm just, so I'm just going to keep focusing on moving ahead. One, one thing that happens is when you keep focusing on moving ahead, mm -hmm. opportunities come your way. Yes. So I hear, I hear from people that want to work with me and um and that are interested in projects with me and that is still happening now and so you know who knows things can take off in a different direction uh, it just it, it just time will tell as these things happen as opportunities arise great hey dennis you know something i want to thank you because this is the first my first interview i've ever okay. done in my whole life Okay. I hope I did well. <laughs> I, yeah, you sure you did. Absolutely. Yeah, because I, I'm I'm just talking to you as if you were my client, asking you stuff and rephrase and and trying to understand what you say. So uh, I guess you can translate freelancing to interviewing uh, abilities. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. It's, good, it's good to know, and I just had an idea to do this more often with other people. Yeah, and good you are the catalyst. So I, yeah, want to, right. I want to thank you for that. Okay, sure thing. Yeah, you're welcome. I'm, I'm happy to do it. Yeah, and, and thank, thank you once again for, for saying yes to my invitation. Uh, I loved what you say. I'm, thank going, you. To, I'm going to edit uh, some, some of the parts to add some, some, how do you call this? Some words for people to understand better what, what we're talking. Okay. And it, it, I'll send you the 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 link later for you to okay. to see it so once again dennis thank you very much for 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 having me and for saying yes to the interview uh, yeah well well thank you for inviting me jose it's been great talking to you it's great to meet you once again yep face face. yep same here same here ciao okay ciao jose bye bye